What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Team Fish Knuckles YouTube channel. Now, this is the fourth day, I guess the fourth day of covering Burning Shadows, and this time around, we have uh, two of the most popular decks coming out of the Burning Shadows format, and that is going to be Glissopod GX and the Gardevoir GX decks. Now, the same players who were playing it earlier in the past videos are playing them as well, and if you want to see the deck list, we actually talked about these earlier this week. Uh, Monday, we talked about the Gardevoir deck, and uh, that was Vlad. And he played against Greninja, and we have Kenton on the right playing his Glissopod Decidueye deck, and he talked about that on Tuesday where he played against an Espeon Garboda deck, so why not pair the biggest two decks together and see what happens. So today we're going to have Glissopod Decidueye versus uh, uh, Gardevoir... Uh, I guess just Gardevoir GX, right? Or Gardevoir Glade, I guess, right? Uh, so, like I said, uh, Vlad is on the left <coughs> playing his Guardian deck. Let me switch these pitches around. I have two pitches in front of me. I have both the Glissopod and the Gardevoir in front of me. Uh, so that way I know what it is at all times. We have all their damage and HP and stuff like that out so we can see it fairly well. And, uh, and we'll see what happens. And here we go, guys. So, both players starting off pretty fantastic here. Uh, we have, you know, Vlad starting with double routes, and we have Kenton starting his top of Coco with that furry tree and the flying flip, and Kenton having that Decidueye. So, we'll see what Vlad does here. He does look like he goes first, <coughs> drew a card, and what he pro- oh, he's on a life center turn one, which is something you usually don't want to do, but his hand could already be good. He has a rare candy Gardevoir already in his hand, but he doesn't have an energy, so he he could have another supporter card in his hand, and is opting not to play it because he wants to get that turn to Rare Candy Gardevoir online. So we see Kitten uh, going to Ultra Ball discard a Rallet and an Acerola to grab a uh, Wimpod. For, I mean, grab a Tapu Lele. No, yeah, grab a Wimpod, put an Energy, put a Silver Wrangle, and going to Sycamore discard his hand, draw seven new cards. Now, if Kitten can go crazy here, he can hypothetically win if Routes has 60 HP like I think he does. Uh, if Kenton can get three Decidueyes down and get a first impression off, he'll be able to take out both Routes, and that would be pretty insane to see. But with the Sycamore, Kenton needs to find a Float Stone, a Forest, and a Glisspod GX. He'll be able to switch and use that first impression for the knockout. Now, I do see a Glisspod in his hand. It is in that far right, but I think he's missing a couple of key cards there. I do see an Ult Ball. And with the Ultra Ball, he could discard some items, grab a Shaman EX and set up, trying to find those perfect six cards to get that retreat and get that turn one first impression. No, nope. we're just see retreat uh, pass onto Vlad's turn. All right, so let's see what does Vlad find here. He's going to draw a card. Like I said, he does have a rare candy Gardevoir in his hand already. Oh, there's a Curly coming down. He's got the rare candy Gardevoir, and he's got a Silver and Gauntlet active and a Sycamore. So he had a fantastic hand. And instead of playing Sycamore last turn, he just, you know, thought, you know, I'm just going to wait. I'm just going to wait. Sycamore, try to find two energies and use that Secret Spring ability to attach a Fear Energy from his hand to one of his Pokemon. And he doesn't find any energies. Oh, no. He doesn't even find a little block. What he he really needs to find is a lovable to oh there it is there's a lovable with this he can grab out a remorade and the next turn get an octillery and start using it to draw cards which is what you want to do with this glade uh oct this with this gardevoir uh octillery deck so there we see Oct the remorade coming down and if he could do this, he can use Octillery's ability, Abyssal Hand, to draw him five cards, and maybe combine it with the Mallow to draw the perfect two cards he needs. Now, even though he's set up, he's still uh, in a bad situation. He didn't find any energies. Um, so he can't attack this turn. <laughs> if he found two energies, he can Seeker Spring and attach one. But nope, looks like he didn't find either one, unfortunately. So, we'll have to see what happens now with Kenton. He most likely cannot take a knockout next turn. It's uh, very, very unlikely. Uh, first impression does 30, and then it comes the active as 90 more. So, 120 with the Silver Angle, 160. Uh, we see a Dark Truck coming down. We see the Glitz Pod, a Flowstone, and uh, looks like Kenton is going to get a tack off this turn to start putting some damage on that Gardevoir and put uh, Vlad in a bad situation because Kenton will be able to knock out this Gardevoir next turn while Vlad really can't one shot this Glisspot. He has 210 HP, and yeah, he's got his attack that is, uh, what was attack called? Infinite Force does 30 times amount of energy of both Pokemon. There's really no way he can get, what, 8 energies? Nah, uh, 6 energies is what he needs. 
um, to take a knockout. And we're going to see Kenton grab a Tapu Lele, play it in, and get six new cards. And with this, Kenton really needs, needs to find a Forest and a Decidueye, and then he'll be good to go. He can start using up Feather Arrows, maybe put the damage on the Curlia or the Route, and just start to stack the damage up that way. He could easily two-shot this guard of War GX by using double first impression. Um, he could put a DC on next turn and do 100. And that can knock it out as well. Uh, there's a couple things Kenta can do next turn to easily knock out this guard of War. So Kenta finding the force, getting the Decidueye GX on the field. He's got a VS Seeker for next turn. He can get another supporter card. Looks like he has a Decidueye in hand. Uh, looks like we will see a retreat most likely and swing with the first impression. Gonna put 20 damage on that bench route saying, hey, if you don't evolve this next turn and I find two decidues, I am knocking out that route next turn. And we'll see a first impression doing 150 damage. And there we go. Uh, such a strong attack, but unfortunately, God of War has a ton of HP. It has 230 HP. It's not being knocked out immediately. And there we see another God of War GX coming down on the field. So now Kenton has to deal with two of these. But luckily, he didn't get a rare candy on that Gardevoir, so he could still hypothetically knock out the Rouse next turn. But Vlad is still in a terrible situation. He has no energies on the side of the field. He cannot attack this turn. And even if he does attack, Kenton could just immediately play Super Scoop up, pick it back in the hand, maybe Ace Arola. We know that's in his discard pile. Um, and yeah, I mean, that's the two big ways to kill his Pokemon. So we see Vlad Ultra Ball, discarding a Bridget and an N, might find a Rimmerain, I mean, Octillery, maybe get that Bissell Hand in play. I do see him eyeballing a Routes. So maybe he wants to get into the Routes and try to get three Gardevoir set up. Maybe a Glade. Uh, Glade plus a Rim Octillery is broken. And there we see another Routes hit the field, but not the Octillery. So I don't know if Octillery is prized. Or if he just more wants to get the routes out to try to get more Gardevoirs and Gallades set up. Uh, now, he could have prized both his Octillaries, and that would be terrible because he wouldn't be able to use Abyssal Hand at all this game unless he found him out of his prize card. So we see Sycamore going to discard a VS Seeker and a Super Rod. Now, the Super Rod is kind of uh, a noteworthy thing to talk about because he only plays the one Super Rod and the one Stretcher, if I remember correctly. And there we see Stretcher coming to his hand, and he does find an Octillery. He finds a DC and a Fader G, so he'll be able to get attack off this turn. Um, the only thing, it doesn't look like he has a Rare Candy as of right now. He does have the Abyssal Hand and a DC and an Ultra Ball. So if, if he could play down his hand low enough, he could hypothetically uh, get a uh, another guard of War set up or glades in here. So we see a Seeker Spring attached to that Fader G. Then we see a DC attachment. And right now, Infinite Force doing 3, 6, 9, 12. It also does 150 damage, and that's pretty funny to see. So we see an Ultra Ball from Vlad going to discard two cards. And I wonder if he's going to go for a Curlia, maybe another Rimmeray to try to get two Octillery set up. He just needs, oh, he's going to discard the Glade, actually. And with the Glade, <clears throat> one thing to note is that he kept the, the Rescue Stretcher in hand. So next turn, he can use the Rescue Stretcher to get that Glade out and easily set up. And there we see him discarding the Guzma, which is a card that, uh, I don't yeah, Kenton does play. Yeah, they both play these cards. Guzma is another way you can activate the first impression. But with Kenton, when he uses that Guzma, he will get the uh, the, the Gardevoir out of the act spot. And Kenton really doesn't want to do that. Uh, he wants to keep the Gardevoir in the act spot and swing with it. So we see a Abyssal Head. Going to draw five new cards. And unfortunately, since Vlad did evolve, if he finds a Rare Candy, like we see right there, he can unfortunately cannot Rare Candy this turn. And we see another first impression, another Seeker Spring, getting that Fader G attached to the active. And now he's swinging for three, six, nine. 9, 12, 15, 180 damage. Uh, so close, but still not a knockout. And that Gardevoir GX could easily be knocked out next turn uh, if Kenta finds a super scoop up. Because that force is going to sit there for a very long time. Uh, unless Vlad can... I don't know if Vlad even plays. Um, I imagine he plays Field Blower. I haven't seen his list in a minute. I kind of forgot about it. And yep, there's the Field Blower coming out. Getting rid of the Flustone and the Forest of Giant Plants. Now, the key card is the Forest of Giant Plants. It will make it where Kenta cannot evolve to get that Glyph Spot back out next turn. And here we see a Super Scoop Up. This is going to be a very, very crucial flip. Unless he will, Kenta, heal this Glyph Spot out of the X Spot or not. Or maybe he's going to wait a second and not use it. Oh, he looks like he's going to hold on to that. He pointed at his Forest of Giant Plants saying, hey... I don't know if I'm going to pick up this Glyph Spot, because if I do, I can't evolve this turn. Alright, so let's see what Kenton decides to do here. He's going to debate. Uh, he's got a DC. He's going to attach in the active, and what we're going to see here is an Armor Press. It's going to do 100 damage, and during your opponent's next turn, this Pokemon t takes 20 less damage, but it will take a knockout on this Guard of Roy GX, and Kenton will take the first knockout. Now, with this 20 damage, 
He could constantly keep, like, maybe putting the damage on the Curlia with the Feather Arrow. Maybe put it on the Routes and try to three-shot it. Um, and we see Vlad going to play, or we see Kenta playing it in, which will shuffle Vlad's Rescue Stretcher back into his deck. And with this, uh, Vlad will not be able to get that Glade immediately back out. And uh, when Kenta takes a knockout here, Vlad will only be have the first... Uh, only one Seeker Spring, but, I mean, if he finds two energies, he's going to take a knockout here regardless. And uh, the camera has frozen for a second, so hopefully it fixes itself. I'm not sure um, if my computer was just... Uh-oh. Uh-oh, this could be bad, guys. Hopefully it fixes itself. Uh, I think my laptop at the time of recording must have overheated and took a second. So hopefully it fixes itself. Uh, we will see here in a second and uh, see... What will happen? All right, let's see if I can fix it, and hopefully it's not too crazy. Oh, okay, we're back. We're back. Okay, we're good. All right, so it looks like both players, all we did, all we missed was a shuffling of in. So we're good here. So Kenton finds a force of jack plants, okay? And that's my laptop. We did not bring my computer to Kenton's house. Unfortunately, we did bring my laptop, uh, so not having the good. But even Kenton, if he found a super scoop book, he already committed a DC on the active, so he would not be able to take, he would not be able to super scoop back into his hand. And we're just going to see an armor press here. Taking a knock. Oh, he's actually not going to use the armor press. He's using the... Uh, crossing Cut GX attack and a 150 switch Pokemon with one of your bench Pokemon. And he's saying, Yo, if you want to take a knockout this turn, Vlad, you gotta find a license to bring up this Glusabon, uh, which is fantastic. So we can't see Kenton use that Cross Cut GX. Actually, forgot about that GX ability. So they're making GX attack. So that's perfect. Doing 150, taking a knockout, and getting that Glusabon out of the active. Now, one unfortunate thing is that Vlad does have the Guzman this car power, so he can bring up that. Uh, that Glisspot and bring up his Gardevoir take a knockout this turn, which is something incredible with the new Guzma card you can see. And let's see if Vlad has a VS Seeker. If he does, he'll be able to pull this Guzma play. He did have a Fader G. He did have a DCE, so he was able to Seeker Spring that Fader G onto Gardevoir and attach a DCE for his turn. So let's see what Vlad decides to do here. Uh, does he have a VS Seeker? And if he does, he better play that, uh, he better use, okay, there we see a VS Seeker, and I imagine we're going to see a Guzma here, bringing up that, okay, no, going to bring up a Lysander, I guess it doesn't matter either way, he has a Guzma, he's got the Lysander, uh, it really does not matter, it kind of does the same thing, uh, he does have the Flowstone, so it, it's hyper, I mean, I would rather see the Guzma here, uh, just to bring it out of the Axe spot, but there we see a Seeker, uh, a, not a Seeker Spring, that's the ability, we see a, uh, we see an infinite force. There we go. I want to see psychic infinity, but it's not a psychic infinity. So we see Kenton immediately using that revitalize to get the glow speed out of the discard pile. We see a, a grass energy be attached, and he'll be able to use that first impression attack here. But I mean, Vlad, could he get a knock out this turn? Yes. Um, three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, eighteen, twenty-one. If Vlad finds another Fairergy and a DCE, he will be able to take a knock on on this glow spot and be able to one shot it. And uh, that is a scary thing with Gardevoir. So we see the Glisspot coming up. We see a Feather Arrow do a 20 to that Curlia. And that Curlia is almost knocked out. I'm pretty sure that's 70 HP. So one more Feather Arrow and it's going to be knocked out. And they receive 120 damage coming down onto that Guardy GX. Now it's going to be up to Vlad to retaliate. I already see a DC in his hand. So that's, key. that's part number one. If he has a Fader G, he'll be able to take a knock on this turn. Uh, there we see he's starting to do the math here. How do I take a knock on on this Glyph Spot? Well, luckily, uh, a, a 210 is divisible by, divisible by 30, so this is easily attainable. Uh, no leftover damage either, so 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18. All he needs now is a Fader G. If he does this, he will have a knockout on that Glissapod. And uh, we'll leave Kenton in another terrible situation. Vlad will go with two prize cards. And uh, Kenton will be able to retaliate with a knockout if he can find another Glissapod and a, a Grass Energy. All right, so we see a VS Seeker from Vlad. Probably going to find a Sycamore. Going to discard the hand. Drawn seven new cards. And that is what we're going to see. He's going to discard uh, multiple cards. Kenton's going to take a good look at this. Make sure there's nothing crazy discarded that he doesn't know about. But does Vlad find a fair energy and i do see one in his hand so he'll be able to use that secret spring ability get a fair energy in play and we will see a knockout uh well i don't think straight away uh, he does have the rescue stretcher in hand and with the stretcher he can get back a guard of war immediately or shuffle three back in his deck like the glade guardians and something else uh it looks like he is just going to use the rescue stretcher for one and i I'd be kind of worried about running out of attackers here. Maybe he has enough. We know he discarded Glade. Look, he did have a guard to get knocked out. So 
He realistically has one more guard he left. He plays a 3-1 split. And there is he a knockout. Unfortunately, he did not find another uh, Fear Energy to attach for that second Seeker Spring. With each guard of war, you can use multiple Seeker Springs. But still, um, he's looking fine. He's got a guard that can pretty much knock out anybody in the field. And Kenton does not have anything right now. But if Kenton can find a good old, uh, there is he a super scoop of, oh boy, what's going to be, oh, okay, Tails, okay, so Tails not finding anything, unfortunately, okay. And this might be because he wanted to pick up the Decidueye, put it back down, and just try to take a knockout. So he's kind of, uh, just, he pointed out multiple cards, I don't know what it was. But with this, he needs to find another Wind Pod, Energy, and a Galissapod. If he'll do this, he'll be able to take a knockout, 120 plus 120 is 240, and will be enough for the KO. But if he does not, he's going to be in a bad situation because Vlad can win next turn, hypothetically, if he finds everything he needs. So we see another Super Scoop up from Kitten, trying to pick up that Decidue, I imagine, I imagine. there we see heads, pick up that Decidue, put it back down, do another feather to that bench, Guard of War GX, all right. So we see Shaman, for Shaman for two, or no, for one, all right, my goodness, for one, Kitten hits the Wind Pod, the Gliss Pod, and the Energy, oh my goodness, the Shaman for one, hitting everything he needs, sit up the Gliss Pod, and he'll be able to take a knockout here, uh, going down to two prize cards, so now we're two to two, but Vlad, can he take a knock on this turn? Uh, maybe <laughs> three, six, nine. Okay, if Vlad can find a DCE, a Theurgy, and a Choice Band, he'll be able to take a knockout on that L Shaman. Oh, he's got to find a Life Center as well. It's so another Crucial Card find. So there's a DC attachment to the uh, Gardevoir, but that Gardevoir already has 100 damage on it. And that might have seemed really relevant, but since kids are constantly just can't put a 20 and 20, 20 on that guardy, he will be able to knock it out if it does send it up. If he finds a, uh, he'll be able to knock it out because infinite force, not infinite force, uh, first person will do 120, and with the feather arrow, we'll do another 20, which will knock out the guard of war GX. So, can kids pull this off and take a knockout on this hurt guardy? It looks like uh, Vlad was going to win this game, but Kenton has brought it around. That top deck with the Shaman, drawing that one card, and this is why Shaman is still fantastic in our format right now. So let's see, what does Vlad have in his hand? And he's, he, he remember, he's almost out of Gardevoirs. He has one Gardevoir left in the deck. He already committed the DC on the bench guardy, so that is there. He can't take that back, unfortunately. Um... He does have a, a field blower in hand, so he can get rid of the forest of giant plants for one more turn. Uh, they receive Ultra Ball, going to discard two cards from his hand, discards a Mallow and a Octillery. And, uh, man, I did see him discard a Rim Ray earlier. If only he had kept the Rim Ray down, he'll be able to get, get two Abyssal Hands off this turn. Uh, so kind of unfortunate on that part. But let's see if, uh... If Kenton doesn't find a way to retreat this Gliss Pod, he could Armor Press. It does 100 with the Feather Arrow, 120, uh, which doesn't knock out a Gardevoir. It has 230 HP. And there we see Old Ball from Vlad getting out another Guardy. All right, so does Vlad have a Rare Candy in his hand to get two Gardevoirs on the, in the field? And if he does, he definitely should have attached the other the other uh, the DC to the bench Guardy. And there we see Rare Candy. Answer the Guardy. We already touched a DC this turn. Hmm. So we see Vlad, he's got a field blower in hand. He can discard two cards to play. There's a forest being discarded, and that's all he can really discard. There's no two cards on Kenton's side of the field. We see a Tapu Lele coming out, and let's see what will Vlad get here. And in will kind of disrupt Kenton, but Vlad needs to find cards as well. But, Kent, uh, but Vlad does have that Bissell hand, so ending the two is not the worst decision at all because Kenton will still have to find a way to pick up this goose, I mean, this, this Gliss Pod. But he can easily do this thanks to Super Scoop Up or Acerola, which we know he has that in the discard pile. He has two in the discard pile right now, and it looks like we might see an in uh, from Vlad. I definitely think you in here. And then play uh, Bissell Hand. So there we see a Via Seeker. Gonna grab it in. And, uh, oh, actually, we see a Life Center for Vlad. So Vlad is gonna try to go for the game this turn. All right, so he's gonna, uh, he's gonna Bissell Hand for five. There's a Fader G, a Choice Band, three, six. And he has the game now. He'll be able to double uh, Seeker Spring onto the, uh, <laughs> Onto that guy, put the choice bit down, 3, 6, 9, 12, and hit for 150 damage out of nowhere. And Kenton showed he had the Guzman next turn. And oh man, Vlad coming out of nowhere, taking the game. Man, that was crazy. 
I thought Kenta was going to have with Vlad showing. You know what? I, I'm showing why uh, Abyssal Hand is such a broken card. I'm going to go for the win here. I'm not going to try to end Kenta. I'm going to Lysander, bring up that shame, and try to take a knock out of this turn. And we see that it did play off of Vlad. Vlad was able to use that Abyssal Hand, draw the cards he needs. Oh, my goodness. I, now, he only needed, like, the two energies or the... Um, Choice Pan, which we know he had a bunch of energies in his deck. He really didn't commit that many energies that game. Uh, he did use a bunch of DCE. So DCE is sh showing why DC is so important, why the energy is so important in the deck. And this is why Gardevoir is one of the strongest decks in the format. And unfortunately, you know Shaman... He's really, really good. He's a fantastic card, but he is 110 HP EX Pokemon. So he does give us two crucial uh, prize cards that Vlad needed to win this game. But this is best two out of three, so this is not done just yet. And we'll see what happens. Maybe Kenton will get set up and uh, maybe take some knockouts quicker. Um, it's definitely a weird interaction here because, you know, Kenton has to two-shot these Gardevoirs, while Vlad can essentially just one-shot a Glisspot. But if if Vlad doesn't one-shot a Glisspot, then Kitten can easily super scoop it back into his hand, but then Vlad can then one shot the Glisspot. So, I mean, it's such a weird match, but that's what we have shown it today for Friday as one of the most, uh, mo I think it's one of the most hyped matches uh, that we have. And guys, next week, let me know what matches you want to see. I'll, I already want to court Metagross versus Mega Rayquaza. I think that'd be a very interesting matchup to see. And we see Kenton does get a double mulligan, again, which is something you don't want to do against Vlad, but Kenton will most likely go first to try to put the pressure on the field. All right, but let me know what matches you want to see. I definitely want to cover Metagross versus Mega Quaza. I think it'll be a funny deck to see because Mega Quaza uh, caps out at 240 and Mega Mega Metagross has I mean Metagross has 250 HP. So it'd be definitely something interesting to see. Uh, so let me know down below what decks you want to see or definitely look into that. We're gonna cover five more matches next week and then we'll go back into PTCGO land. Uh, but we see Kenton gonna start with the Rally and a Wimpod. You gotta see Ultra Ball discarding a, uh, a Guzma and a uh, the I don't know what card that is. Maybe Ace Rolla. I'm not sure. That's one of the new cards I don't know about. And then we see Kenta and Melee. Just grab that top of Lele and play in. Just try to get set up here. Now, hypothetically, if I remember correctly, like I said earlier, Routes has 60 HP. So if Kenta can find a crazy three Decidueyes this turn, it would be almost, I think it is like out of the question impossible. Um, unless he hits like key combinations of these cards and a Shaman, he could... Possibly take a knockout this turn and win the game, uh, but I don't think that's going to happen. I do see another Rowlet in his hand, and then the Wimpod coming down as well. And he's got the other Rowlet. He could put that down. He's got a Glisspot in hand, and uh, we might just see a pass from Kenton onto uh, Vlad's turn. Now, the good thing for Kenton, since he's going second, he'll be able to knock out a Rowlet's turn too. Uh, Vlad cannot deny this. Um, all of Vlad's Pokemon are easily knocked out. He's got Rowlet's. Or run rate, so Kenton will be able to take a first. Uh, will be able to take the first knockout, and we see Vlad get some grapes there, trying to get fueled up, ready for this match. And uh, on the Vlad's turn, turn, let's see what happens. So Vlad is going to commit a fear energy to the active. Okay, it's always scary, especially when Kenton can easily take a knockout next turn. But we'll see it in, and we see Kenton showing off a sand, saying, "Hey, I had the Lele, Flowstone, Glisspot. I was taking a knockout this turn, but." We'll see. Kenta's deck is built for this kind of consistency to get the turn to Glisspot fairly easily and to knock out these uh, basic Pokemon, which is what Kenta is going to take a, uh, uh, he's going to take advantage of with his fast Glissapod deck. So let's see what do both players find. I imagine uh, Vlad wants to find more routes just in case his active one does get knocked down. He does find more a Love Ball, but only one Love Ball. Now this is bad if you're Vlad because Vlad wants to find at least two. He wants to find one for routes and one for a Rim Raid. And uh, you got to be thinking if you're Vlad, you have to get another routes here. You need to get a turn to Gardevoir. ASAP, and uh, that's what we're going to see from Vlad probably is grab a Routes. And we see that Routes immediately come up to the X spot, getting ready to come out and, and to play. Uh, but Kenton, all he needs to find is Glisspot, which I already see that in the far right of his hand, and a Flustone. If he does, he'll be able to use that Fresh Pressure for a knockout and start putting the pressure, I guess the, I, guess the, I don't know, the pressure on uh, Vlad. So, going to give a good cut here, and uh, we're going to see a pass from Vlad onto... Oh, we're actually going to see an attack for 10 damage. I can't remember what attack does, but maybe the, maybe that 10 damage will matter. So, it looks like Kenton is getting ready to put down a Forest of Giant Plants. We saw him move that GX marker. We see a Glisspot come down, a Grass Energy to the active, another Wimpod coming down, VS Seeker Fort in. 
I'm going to give both players a new hand of six. Now, even though Kim Kenton committed a grass energy to the active, he wants to find a flow stone here because if he can keep the flow stone only Rallet, he's able to use Raze Leaf at any moment he wants to if he finds a DCE. Which you might be saying, you know, Raze Leaf not that strong. It only does 90 HP, but with a feather, it does 110. With a fresh pressure attack before that, you can easily knock out a uh, Gardevoir. So that's something you always have to look into. But he does, looks like he has to re manually retreat this Rallet. I imagine he had a Flowstone, he would have just slapped it down, been good to go. He does have a Super Scoop up in hand. He's got a Rallet in hand. The only unfortunate thing is he doesn't have a Tapu Koko or a Flowstone on the field. So we'll just retreat from the Glyph Spot uh, and uh, take a knockout here with the Fresh Pressure going out of five prize cards. No to Vlad's turn, the pressure is on. He needs that turn to Rare Candy Gardevoir. No, we're going to see a Curly come down instead. Another Rallet's hit the field. Field. It looks like Vlad, he's saying, you know what, I'm going to take the slow route. I don't care. I'll let you knock out a couple Pokemon because once I get these Gardevoir GXs online, it's not going to matter. So we see a DC on that bench rouse, and he's definitely making Kenton considering what does he want to do because Kenton, he could maybe try to go for the active, maybe try to go for the bench. I don't know. It's going to be up to him to see what he wants to do. Now, if Kenton finds a DCE, he can easily take a knock on this Curly or the Routes and not have to waste a Super Scoop Up or an Acerola or a Guzma. So he's fine with that. He finds a DCE. He can use the Armor Press, do it 100 damage, and make over the Gliss Pod. takes 20, da 20 less damage the following turn. So we see Vlad going to look through his deck. And you got to remember, with this Ultra Ball, Vlad doesn't play Tapu Lele. Um... There's no Tapu Lele in his deck, so we do see a Rimmer coming down, and that's the only unfortunate thing about playing no... I mean, maybe he does play Tapu Lele. I don't think he plays Tapu Lele. I don't have the list in front of me, unfortunately. Uh, I kind of imagine he plays at least one Tapu Lele, right? But we'll see. It looks like we just need a pass from Vlad onto Kenda's turn, and uh, we're going to see a Super Scoop up here. Either way, if Vlad plays a Tapu Lele, which I can't remember if he does or doesn't, uh, it's, in the, it's in the prize cards. So we see a super scoop up from Kenton, going to send up that Wimpod, maybe. Oh, he's, he's debating what to do now. Um, he gets sent up the Wimpod here. Um, actually, hold on. I think he's looking at Glisspot's attack. Because Glisspot says if this Pokemon was on the bench and became your active Pokemon, you do additional damage. But since Glisspot was in the active pod and it was a Wimpod, he's actually in trouble. So we have to see a second super scoop up here. And it's going to be another hand. So Kenton will be pick up, pick up the Saku Lele. Sitting in the glow spot and take a knockout this turn, saying, you know what, I don't need no support cards. I'm just going to hit double super scoop up heads. And that's what we see Kenta do here. He will be able to first press take a knockout going on a four prize cards. All right, so Vlad is going to put that room raid. What does he top deck? And it's going to be a DCE, but that is not going to be enough. This poor Routes is going to take another hit to the face. Uh, but, I mean, Kenta does have a float stone. He's got another super scoop up. Is Does he go for three for three? Only super scoop ups. And it's going to be another heads. Going to put the Glyphod back into his hand. I imagine we'll see the Rallet coming up. He does have a float stone. Stone down, go to drop all those cards, flow stone, retreat, and put another rallet down for good measure just in case he drop decks and in. Put a choice spin down as well. Just prepared forward in if that does happen. And we'll see another knockout on a blast turn. Does he top deck out of it? And there's Sycamore. Oh, he's saved. He's not, he hasn't lost the game just yet. So Vlad will sit up and find seven new cards. And what does Vlad find here? I see an Ultra Ball. I see him Rim Raid. So there is hope somewhere, but I do not know how much hope is for Vlad. Uh, Kenton has already knocked out three routes um and that's the bad thing here because you know vlad only plays four of those guys so we see an ultra ball go and discard two cards from his hand and the moment of truth is does vlad have his last routes prized or not if he does well that's pretty much game over and the last, last routes is in a stack but kenton could easily guzma that up uh flowstone somebody out and maybe take a knockout he did discard oh the flowstone got uh phil blowed away so that's something good for kenton or for vlad we see a fair GB attach and a Abyssal Hand. Now, with this Abyssal Hand, he needs to find a Super Rod, but he does not find a Super Rod. He does not find a Love Ball, so he will not be able to get another Routes onto the field. So, if Kenta can knock out his other Routes, um, you know, flies in trouble. So, Kenta does have a VS Secret Hand. Does he have a Guzma in the discard pile? If he does, he can Guzma up that Routes, put an Energy on a, on, on a uh, 
Somebody in retreat it. So there we see Guzma gonna bring up somebody retreated, and I'll see another first impression for the knockout. Kenzo go down to two prize cards, and you gotta think if you're Vlad, this is pretty much game. This is one of the downsides of playing. Oh, it looks like he topped like a guardy, maybe. Uh, yep, he has a rare candy guardy in hand. Oh man. All right, but uh, Vlad, he's out of routes. There's four in the discard pile. We're gonna see an end from him. Uh, we're still gonna play this out. We're gonna allow. It doesn't really matter. He could concede in a real game. You definitely would concede here. But maybe Vlad can pull a miracle and come back and uh, easily take this game. But this is one of the downsides of Gardevoir GX. Is if you don't sit up, you're in trouble. Um, now, same thing with Kenton. He could not sit up as well. But with Vlad, he needs more stuff. He needs a rare candy Pokemon. While Kenton just needs a Pokemon in the Forest of Giant Plant. So. I don't, I don't know. I guess Kenton's Forest of Giant Plants can stay in play forever while, um, you know, Vlad has to find the rare candy. So I guess that's what a key difference here is. But uh, let's see. What does Vlad find? Does he find another Pokemon? I mean, his only other Pokemon he could find is a Rim Raid. And even if then, he needs to find a Super Rod and a uh, way to get back those routes onto the field. And that's where he really needs to see this turn. And uh, we might see a pass on a Kenta's turn. And what does Kenta find here? He's going to find a Tapu Koko. He's got a Dartrex coming down. And uh, looks like we might see a fresh impression for uh, for 30 damage. I'm pretty sure it does 60 at yeah, 6 on there. Okay, let's make sure. Yeah, like, I'm pretty sure it's weak to grass. And it is. So it takes that 60. It can be knocked out next turn. We see a VS Seeker. Maybe finding a Sycamore. Just trying to set up. And just trying to dig for a Super Rod to get these... Uh, Pokemon back into his hand. There we see a bunch of stuff being discarded. All right, does he find a Super Rod to get back Pokemon or a Room Raid to stay in this game? And I see a Love Ball. Uh, we see another Room Raid hitting the field as well. All right, a Room Raid. Sorry, but I do not see a Super Rod or a Rescue Stretcher. That is what he needs to see. And we'll see pass on a Kenta's turn. Uh, Kenta is slowly just gonna. Take a knockout here. We see an end. Both players will set up or will shuffle up. Vlad will find six while Kenta finds two. But Vlad, I mean, Kenta will take a knockout going on to one prize card. And man, if you're Vlad, you got to be thinking that this is best two out of three. Uh, Vlad did win game one, so that's something to note. Uh, we see that Vlad is going to get six new cards. He finds a love ball. He finds a rescue stretcher. And Kenta finds another Gliss Pod. Uh, putting his hand down to zero. Uh, so Kenton will take a knockout. Going down to one prize card. Vlad will send the rim raid. And Vlad finds both a super rod and a rescue stretcher. So he will be able to punch Pokemon back into his deck. But is it too late? Probably. Uh, I guess the good thing is Glisspot does have a three retreat cost. So he can't retreat to the other Glisspot for a knockout. Uh, Vlad, uh, Kenton will have to find like an Acerola, a Guzma, a DCE, and Kenton has a hand of Zero right now, so that's something to notate as well. So we'll see Super Rod, gonna look through his deck and see what do I all want to put in there, I guess realistically. Yeah, he only needs two routes, maybe even just, no, nah, I think you need maybe two, and that way try to get a double rare candy guard next turn, take some knockouts that way. And he looks like he's eyeballing this fear energy. Remember, he does have a rescue stretcher in hand, uh, so he could put more Pokemon into his deck that way. He could put a routes and two Faderges, and then maybe a rescue stretcher, like a gar a routes and like a guardian and a glade or something. Um hmm. So we see okay, two routes and a fair energy. I think this is fine. I uh, remember Vlad does, he does play somewhat a good amount of fair energies, but it's not a ton. Alright, so see Rescue Stretcher gonna shuffle three back into his deck, I imagine is what we're gonna see. I mean, maybe he'll put one in the field and feel, feel kind of spicy here, but um I guess one thing he could find is put a, a artillery in the act spot and uh be able to get that Bissell handoff if needed. I it doesn't do it straight away, but it makes it where Kenta cannot take a knockout immediately unless he finds a DCE or a super scoop up. Um so I guess that's one thing to say. And he does find a Routes, okay. And he's got an N and a DCE. So he can put a DC in the Routes. He can put a uh, Choice Spin on it and play an N. Put the kid down to one. And if Vlad gets lucky, he could get a turn to Rare Candy uh, Gardevoir. Maybe Kenta can't find another Pokemon. And, it, and then maybe, just maybe... Vlad takes the game 2-0, but man, if you're Vlad right now, you got to be kind of scary. Kenton has one prize card left. Vlad has six, so, oh, man, I, I just think it's going to be, I think it's almost game over for Vlad. And, I mean, Kenton luckily cannot take an immediate knockout with three Dartrexes, and we see Vlad going to find six, but Kenton has one, and Kenton is holding to that card very, very clutch-like. Oh, man, is the one card he needs. Vlad has multiple rare candies and Ultra Balls in hand, so he'll be able to get that turn, too. 
uh, Guardi he wants, so let's see. Uh, he's got three rare candies and an Ultra Ball, so we might just see a pass from Vlad. You really don't want Ultra Ball here. You want to hold on to these cards, and next turn you use that infinite force attack. All right, so we'll probably see a pass with the Octillery in the Axe Spot. Do not think it's a bad play at all, and um, yeah. I think you just pass here and just hope Kenton does not have a way to retreat that Gliss spot. So, mm -hmm, just wait to see what will Vlad do. He's looking at his hand, trying to figure out what to do. I definitely think you just wait. Uh, the, I mean, maybe he'll go crazy and get this, like, he does have three or candies in hand. So, okay, and the Kenton, of course, has the Guzma in his hand. Wow, Kenton just have the Guzma there saying, hey, you know what? You're going to aim me to one, but I'm going to find that Guzma. And, yep, Vlad does have two type of Lele's in his deck. I was pretty sure he played Tapu Lele. Um, <laughs> don't know why he wouldn't, uh, but he did have both Tapu Lele surprise, which is very unfortunate when you're playing this deck. Like Vlad, he ultra ball trying to find Tapu Lele. I was like, oh, guess I'm going to grab a run right now by top deck and Octillery. Oh, man. But this is best two out of three. Vlad did win game number two, and Vlad will be able to go first. Now, even though he's able to go first, Kinta could have an amazing turn one. He could start with like a top of Coco or a Relic, put down a Wind Pod, put down a Glow, a glow Speed, a Choice Band, take a Knockout. He can also find double Wind Pod, retreat to a Glow Spot, glow spot and take a Knockout that way. Uh, so there's a couple things here that Kenton can easily go his way and maybe take a turn one win. Maybe put quick, quick pressure on Vlad. And uh, I'm excited to see what happens in game number two. And guys, which deck do you want to see take the win? Do you want to see Gardevoir GX or do you want to see Glow Spot and Decidueye? I know uh, these are the two biggest decks, like I said, from Burning Shadows. And uh, if you want to see the deck list, the list are down below in the description. Uh, they are modified since that. But if you watch the whole video, we talk about what we modified in these decks, uh, so make sure you check that out as well. And then tomorrow we have an, we have another deck with this Gardevoir, and it's a big match that everybody wants to see as well. And that is with Volcanion. So we will see Volcanion versus this Gardevoir GX deck, and we're gonna see what happens because you know Volcanion is a big map on the radar on the radar right now. So we see that Vlad will get a Mulligan. And Kitten did find a basic Pokemon. So um, <laughs> I like how Kitten looked through Vlad's hand, like, "Ooh, is there anything I don't know?" When we like built the decks together, so it's really nothing in there that Kitten does not know. Every every player should know. I mean, unless you don't super mem memorize it, but both players know what's in each player's decks pretty pretty well. If I do say so myself. Uh, so Kitten will be able to draw a card. And that's always that's always good for Kenton. Uh, it's any good for it's always good for any player being able to draw extra cards and uh, be able to utilize that's a big thing in Pokemon right now. So Vlad will set up, get seven new cards, and we'll see what happens. So Vlad does find a route and he finds an Ultra Ball. He can maybe get that turn one Bridget. Of course, you gotta think he's playing Lele because he does play the Bridget in his deck. Duh. All right, so there we go. Kenton starting the route and Vlad will get the turn one off. Uh, so we see top of Lele. Did, did Vlad draw a card? Okay, so Vlad's gonna draw a card. Edgardi, uh really probably doesn't change things. He's probably just gonna find a Bridget and get down two uh, routes and a Rim Raid. So we see a Rim Raid coming to the top. We see a routes, but he needs to find that fan club for. I mean, not the fan club, the Bridget. Oh boy, he's looking through that right now. Is the fan club? Okay, nope, there it is. I keep wanting to say fan club, but it's Bridget. So see two routes and a Rim Raid coming down onto the field. And um, Vlad will have it. He has a fantastic turn one right now. Can't complain about that at all. Having the optimal three routes, Rim Raid start is always fantastic. He's got a Glade in hand. He's got a, a Rim, an, um, I think he's got a Glade and an Ultra Ball. And it's even rare candy. If he has all those cards, he's going to be going pretty far this game. Uh, because if he does, he will get that turn two rare candy uh, glade, get the artillery, use the Bissell, uh, Bissell plus premonition combo, and get set up pretty easily. So we see a force of giant plants hit the field. Okay. But can Kenta find a, a Wimpod, Glisspod, Energy, Floatstone, or Super Scoop Up? Don't know. Uh, Kenta does have an N, and this N. Uh, Kenta might not think it's a big deal, but it was a super big deal. Because if I saw Vlad's hand correctly, he did have an Ultra Ball, he had a Rare Candy, he had a Glade, and if I was Vlad, I would definitely think Ultra Ball for the Octillery, Rare Candy Glade, uh, Premonition, Abyssal Head, hit the cards I want, maybe Rare Candy Gardevoir, play a Sporter card, and then he's super set up. Uh, but Kenton will uh, disrupt that great turn one from Vlad. So both players will sign, find six new cards, and let's see, can Kenton get a fantastic turn one, or will Kenton just pass and get knocked out? So we see Grashen go to the active. We will see a Shaman going to set up for two. Uh, he does have a Decidueye over one. Oh no, two. 
Oh boy, he has a dark. He has a decidueye in here, but does he have a dark tracks? If he does, that's good. Um, but we might just see a pass. Maybe a treat to shaman. And yeah, he's gonna treat to shaman, and we're gonna see a pass on a Vlad's turn. Uh, I mean, if Vlad. So if Vlad, I mean, he could hypothetically take a knockout of shaman, but it would be the most insane thing I've seen. So see a fair to be attached to the active. We see a curly coming down. He does have an Ultra Ball, okay. So you can Ultra Ball, discard two cards from his hands, discards a Glade and a Guzma. And I wonder if this will find. Well, it depends what his hand is. If he has a Rare Candy in hand, then he's getting Guard for. If he doesn't have Rare Candy in hand, he's going to get an Octillery. And it looks like he is going to grab Octillery, which will give him that turn two Abyssal hand. Now, next question is what support card is in his hand? Because if he has a Mallow. He can Mallow and put a Rare Candy Gardevoir on top and have the turn to Guardia have the perfect setup and be good to go. But I do not know what's in his hand. I see an N. We'll see if it's hand for three. One, two, three. Oh boy, he's got a Love Ball. So with the Love Ball, he'll be able to find another Routes, uh, which is good. Getting four Routes down. He could get another Curlia here and get two Curlia's Manly setup. It looks like he is going to eyeball that Routes. And I'm a... Oh, maybe not. Maybe he wants to go for another Octillery. Uh, no, then go for the Curlia. All right, so he's going to try to get two Gardevoirs out next turn, saying, hey, if you knock me out, whatever. I'm fine. I have two Curlias. I don't need the Rare Candy. I'm going to Manly Ball these bad boys into Gardevoir GXs. And Vlad does have an in hand. So with the end, both players are going to get six good cards. Now, with Vlad, he wants a Rare Candy Gardevoir and a Phaedrogy and a Choice Fan. Uh, even then, that's not enough for a knockout. <laughs> uh, the most he can do this turn is 60, 90, so irrelevant, yes, for sure. But uh, Kenton did save himself by not seeing that, that leaving that dart, uh, the the, uh, the route in the act spot. Because if he had left in the act spot, it could get easily knocked out this turn. So both players are going to shuffle up, find six new cards. Neither player has taken a knockout just yet. And we'll see what both players find here. So <clears throat> six new cards go into their hand. So six, six, six. Um, does Vlad find a rare candy Gardevoir or not? I see a Tapu Lele, and oh man, I do not see a Gardevoir in his hand, unfortunately. Um, yeah, that's not good. So, <laughs> it'll be back on the kids to put the pressure on Vlad, and this is what you might see for both decks sometimes, is neither player not really setting up. Uh, so you see Phil Blower giving that Forest of Giant Plants, and hey, Kenton, you know what? I, you don't need this Forest of Giant Plants. It's not good for you. So Kenton's going to draw a card. I do see Glissopod in the sand. I see a Rallet coming down as well. Uh, Dartrix hit the field. Okay. Um, a Grass Synergy to the Dartrix, which means no Burst of Press attack from a Glissopod this turn. And is that a pass from Kenton? Yes, that is a pass from Kenton. Oh, boy. So both players are struggling to set up here. So, oh, man. So, I mean... Vlad has a DC in hand, so now he's got he's got an option. What does he do here? He's got a DC. He's got a he's got a top of Lele, but can he get his hand down enough to get a perfect Mallow here? Uh, because if he has DC active, put down a top of Lele for Mallow. Can he draw two cards? I don't know. One, two, three, four, five, six. So six, five, four. Actually. Yeah, if he does Mallow here, so we see Super Rod, he will be able to get a rare candy. Um, yeah, he could top with Lele for Mallow, put a DC in the active, and 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 get the the, the he can be able to. Oh, he, has a, he actually has a Mallow in his hand right now. Oh boy, so yeah, he's looking good. So we see Mallow put two cards on top of his hand, which is going to be a rare candy and a Gardevoir. So he will be able to swing this turn, but he he already has three cards in hand. So he would not be able to take a knockout here. So the only way Vlad can take a knockout, three, six, nine. Oh, if he plays down top of Lele and doesn't find a supporter card, um, he could opt out and do you I mean he could just like look at his deck and be like, oh, there's no supporter cards in here. Um <laughs> that could be something funny we see. That could be a thing. Uh actually, no, he needs to put it on top of Lele and not use his ability because he just mallowed. Um, that'd be something for sure. So we'll see what Vlad decides to do here with this uh with this Lele in hand. Does he just keep it or does he abyssal hand for two? Just grab him the rare candy. Um guys, yeah, so yeah, we're just see uh, yep, just gonna hit those five cards and, and there we go. So we could see infinite force here. And gonna use that 90 damage. Now what Vlad could have done was maybe use Twilight GX and put some key cards back into his deck. Um, that is something he could have done because right now that attack was just useless. I mean, Vlad could have put 10 cards from Discard Pile back into his deck, put like the rare candy, um, 
Maybe not the supporter cards, maybe the VS Seekers, but nope, we will not see that. And instead, we'll see Kanta Super Scoop Up, Pick Up the Shaman, Bloodstone, uh, Forest, and draw a couple of new cards. And let's see, what does Kenta find? Can he find a Glisspod finally or not? And it looks like Kenta's hands are shaking, which means he did not find one. Vlad, give the thumbs up there. Uh, both players are having a fun, good time right now. Just fun to see. Uh, so, yeah, I mean... Looks like Vlad will break out of this first. So we see Tapu Lele from Kenton, and I imagine we are going to see it. Oh, a Sycamore. Wow. All right, so Kenton's hand is that bad. I mean, he wants to get a Glissapod set up and start attacking, because if he doesn't, well, this Gardevoir is going to start taking some numbers, knock, some taking some key knockouts next turn. So we see not a Sycamore discarding uh, Accelerola Glissapod, another uh, Accelerola um, a Guzma or something, I don't know, there's a bunch of cards being discarded there, and a VS Seeker, so a lot of resources being discarded, but Kenta does find a Decidueye, so he can maybe use the Hollow Hunt, we see a Wimpod, we see a Glow Speed, we see another Wimpod, does he have a Grass Energy to get an attack off this turn or not, there's a DC on a Shaman, so we might, we'll most likely see a Skyward turn here, uh, just getting the Shaman off the field, maybe sitting in, I don't know who you send in here if you're, if you're Kenton, maybe the Okay, so you see Feather Arrow for 20, all right, and we'll see a Sky Turn for 30, and you can see Kenta not really sure who to send in, maybe the Wind Pod, you really don't care if that gets knocked out. The Rala has a Floatstone, so you don't want to send up that. Top of the other, huh, 3, 6, 9, I mean, if Vlad finds a Psychic, a Fairy Energy and a DCE, he can take a knockout this turn on that guy, so we'll see if Fairy Energy goes to the active, we'll see Abyssal Hand for 2, 1, and 2. I do see an Ultra Ball in his hand, so he'll be able to get out another Gardevoir GX and maybe use that Sacred Seeker, or yeah, use that Sacred Seeker Spring. Uh, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. All right, but he's still not in the clear just yet. He'll need to find two Fader Js, one for a Sacred Spring and one for an attachment, take a knockout on that Tapu Lily and go down to four prize cards. But if he does this, he will, ha he will have committed a bunch of energies, and there is he in. Both players are going to shuffle by six new cards. All right, which might be good for Kenton because I don't know if Kenton had a full stone or not. But uh, I guess one scary thing is if Vlad doesn't get knock on here, Tapu Lele still has that attack that he can use. Uh, right now, I'll do 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. I'll do 120 damage, bringing the guard up to 170 with a choice spin 200, Feather Arrow 220. So. You can see how Kenton could easily take a knockout with this Tapu Lele next turn, or within the or get set up for a knockout, I guess the correct thing to see or say. But both players will get six new cards, okay. And Vlad finds a one fair energy. Oh no, he needs one more. That is not enough for a knockout. We see a lovable. Go to find maybe another route. He really can't put down another uh Curlia because he only plays a do and there's nobody to devolve from. So we will see a route hit in the field. And we'll see what Vlad decides to do with this hand. He does have energy attachment, but maybe he puts it on the bench guarding. Oh wait, honey, he has a, he has a choice man. So three, six, nine, 12, 15, and this will be a knockout. Uh, he can seek your spring again, maybe attach for the turn, and just choice man and uh, take a knockout. So yeah, Vlad does have the knockout of this turn, but uh, I mean, oh, it looks like he is gonna put a fader on that bench guard of war instead though. Choice man, the active, so three, six, nine, 12, 150. We see, uh, oh no, yeah, there we go, so I wonder if Kenton would like Vlad take this back, and, uh, I think, yeah, I think Kenton's gonna let him take this back and let him take the knockout here, so that's good, that's good, because this is, this is testing, we're testing right now, uh, so he will take a knockout, going down to four prize cards, as long as Vlad remember takes his type prize cards, uh, hopefully Vlad takes his prize cards, okay, uh, we'll see an end, so both players will shuffle up. Okay, there we go. Vlad taking two prize cards. Wow, both were energy cards. It was a DC and a Fate Energy, which are two good cards that Vlad wants to see for next turn. But can Kenta take a knockout? Right now, that Gardevoir has, uh, has 50 HP left. Okay. Um... So we'll see. We'll see what Vlad gets here. Uh, Vlad, right now, hey, at first impression, does 120, which is not enough. Uh, it's only 170 with a choice span. 190 with a fair there, 210. So still not taking a knockout, uh, but it will set up a knockout the following turn. All right. So, uh, but what does Vlad, what does Ken define here? I do not see that many good cards at hand. Uh, he does have a super scoop up. I definitely think you save those for your decision wise because, well. 
I don't know, because right now Vlad's doing 36, 9, 12, 15, 180 damage. Uh, he's doing 210 off that glitch spot next turn to knock it out. Um, that is a fact. That is a factual fact. So, uh, Kinton is in trouble here. That glove spot could be knocked out. Uh, looks like Kinton's going to promote the, uh, Decidueye, maybe? That does get knocked out immediately. So, we see some Feather Arrows to the active. Okay. We'll see Super Scoop up. Tails. Okay. We'll see another Super Scoop up. It's ahead, so he'll be able to pick up that Decidueye. Okay. Put it back down. Hit 20 on the act, uh, active. So, one, uh, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. We see an old 12 can go and discard two cards from his hand. So discards a whip pod and a grass energy. So right now he's at 90 HP. Alright. Uh 90 plus uh, what? Uh, 120 is not enough still. He's 200, so he's still short right now. We see a shaman gonna set up for a couple cards. I mean, if Kenton has a knockout here, you're going to see him move very, very, very quickly. Uh, so 90 HP plus 120 is not enough for a knockout just yet on that Guard of War GX. It will be 20 damage short. He needs to find another Dark Trucks get out, maybe another Sewer Scoop up. Um, I mean, he could set up for a knockout, like I said, it's in the Gliss Pod. Just swing for 120, uh, bringing up the Guardy GX to 210. But then uh, Vlad will take another prize card and going down to 2. So I wonder what, what Kenton's going to decide to do here. He's looking at his hand. We see Ultra Ball discarding a Forest and a Rallet. Okay, thank you, Vlad, for doing that. I can now see what it is. And we see Kenton showing that he did have the Dark Tricks and the Situai in the deck, but unfortunately did not hit both of those cards. Because if he hit those cards, he would have been able to take a knockout this turn. Oh, boy. All right, so Kenton's going to consider what to do here. How does he deal with this Gardevoir GX that has uh, three, five energies on it? Okay, um, gonna look through his deck again, trying to contemplate what does he do. Does he have a second shaman he can use? We see another glow, glow spot coming down onto the field, and what we could see is Kenton just retreat to the glow spot, saying, hey, whatever, you can take a knockout, I don't care. But I definitely think you keep the round the axe spot. I definitely don't think you sacrifice the glow spot to be knocked out, going, making Vlad go down to two. Uh, and we're gonna see the glow spot here swing with a first impression, okay? So we'll do 120, so 6, 12, 18, 19, 20, 21. Guard of War surviving by 20 HP, which is very unfortunate for Kenton, not finding the second Decidueye or the Choice Ban. So we see a Glade coming line. We see a Seeker Spring and Attach or to an Act. Maybe Double Seeker Spring, actually. So we see permanent Permission using top five cards of his deck, and Vlad is in full setup mode. He's got two Guardians. He's got a Glade. He's got an Auxiliary. And uh, with those five cards, I don't think that's really what he wants to see here. Let's say he's going to put an Ultra Ball maybe on, uh, somewhere across the line. And we're going to see Abyssal Hand for five, three, uh, four, and five. He does have an Ultra Ball. He could just Sycamore this hand away. I don't know how much resources are left in his deck. But he's going to take a knockout regardless uh, going down to two. And then all he has to do is knock out a Sigui and or the Chainman and win the game. So you got to think this game is going to go Vlad's favor. It looks like Vlad... He has a phone call. I'm pretty sure if I remember this correctly. But, I mean, even though uh, that that Gardevoir GX has uh, 100, two, uh, 210 HP, it is still going to take a knock on this turn. It's doing 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18. With a choice band, 210 hitting those perfect numbers on that glitch spot, unfortunately. So, it is not looking good for Kenton. But, we'll see if Kenton can maybe have a comeback and... Uh, yeah, that's the only unfortunate thing about this guard. I mean, that's that's a good thing about Guardian GX. It's such a fast deck, but if it doesn't set up, then you can easily lose this game, and that's what we saw in game number two. And I think Vlad right now is just saying, um, just talking on the phone. Okay, he's done. We're good. We're good. No need of no need to speed up. He was making sure he was fast. So, all right. So we see uh, Vlad looking through his hand. Going up. He was contemplating playing an Ultra Ball. Uh, he does have a knockout here. It is perfect. Two ten. He is taking a knockout here. I'm pretty sure. I think he's just double checking at this point. He definitely, like, when he evolved that Guardian, he knew what he was doing. So, we see Ultra Blood just turning a Sycamore and an end. And let's see, what does Vlad decide to find here? It looks like he is... He got an Octillery. He can maybe just Sycamore that away, saying, hey, I really don't need this card. It's kind of just a dead card. Don't need it in my deck, really. And I think that's what we're going to see from Vlad. Just Sycamore, discard his hand, draw seven new cards. And there we go. Discarding a Rimmerade and Octillery. Uh, the Family Moomer is being discarded. But if Vlad can attach a DC in this turn, uh, he'll put himself on a... Like, almost a game-winning... Uh, and he does have a... Oh, my goodness. He has a rare candy 
and a rescue stretcher, but there's no guarded GXs in his discard pile, so he cannot rare candy guarded GX this turn. That would be insane, and uh, he could have attached a fader to Gardevoir, but I don't know how much this is going to matter. Uh, we see Vlad going to two prize cards. We see Revitalize of Kenton put two cards in his hand, and I imagine we'll see a feather for the knockout on that guardy. But what else will Kenton find this turn? He played a Sycamore, so what Vlad could do is just set up somebody to let it take a hit, but he could easily knock out um, whoever's in the axe spot. He's got double secret spring. If I'm Vlad, I just send the Octillery, let that take a hit. I don't really care about this as much. Uh, yeah, I'll let my Octillery gets knocked out, but I don't care. I still have two secret springs and an attachment for my turn. Um, so, yeah. Uh, we see Kenton going to use a feather to that bench guardy. Okay. He's got a grass energy. He hasn't attached energies just yet. But if he assumes a glow spot, it's. Whew, it's already in trouble as it is. And I mean. Well, he's already played Sycamore, so I'm pretty sure Vlad has his game. I think Vlad has it 3, 6, 9. If Vlad has two energies in his hand, he can easily just, like, lie into Shaman take a knockout and win the game. Uh, Shaman EX looks like it might cost Kenton the game back-to-back. -back. And what does Kenton do here? He's he hit another Tails on that Super Scoop Up. Does he go for, like, maybe a um, a Hollow Hunt to get back cards in his deck? Does he go for First Pression to take a knockout? I don't think he first pressure here, and Vlad, oh, he's got game in hand. He's got two Faderdies and a Lysander, so yep, that is going to be the game. Uh, Vlad is going to be able to double Secret Spring to that Gardevoir GX, Lysander the Shaman, and do 3, 6, 9, 12, and knocking out poor Shaman X. Costa Kenton, both games, and unfortunately, so we see a Grass Ninja going to the active, and we'll see a Hollow Hunt. Gets some energies back into his hand, but Vlad will have the game. And there we go, guys. There is the Gardevoir GX Gallade versus the Decidueye Ghost Speed deck. Um, now, it definitely seems like this tech is very heavy. Um, favor towards Gardevoir GX. Now, is that because Kenton didn't set up? I don't know. Um, but maybe next week we'll see Ghost Pod Zork. I don't know how much difference that will make in this matchup. You definitely got to think the Feather has helped Kenton more than a Zork. Maybe. I don't know. Um... Because Zora could uh, do some more damage out of nowhere. Um, Mind Jack can easily help take, pick up a knockout. And you do have the automatic rush and retreat, or er, er, stand and retreat to, to activate that first impression. So that's another thing you think about. But here we go. Oh, and a Vlad's turn. He's got the double attachment. He's got the life standard. Bring up the shame and Vlad will take this game. So, guys, tomorrow, I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think. And if you have any deck suggestions you want to see, uh, make sure you leave them down below in the comments. But, guys, I hope you have a fantastic Friday. Thanks for watching the video. Hit that subscribe button. Alrighty. Bye. Alright guys, I just want to give a quick shout out to our three sponsors, 60 Cards, Yeti Gaming, and the Pokemon Company International. Links to everything will be down below in the description. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Alrighty.